everyone, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. This is episode 22. Last time we met with a particular Grey Warden in hiding. We went with Hawk and we met Alistair and it was great. It was a good time. It was a good reunion. And then we've been helping him out in the Here Lies the Abyss questline. Uh, we're now going to summon the War Council so we can actually do the proper Here Lies the Abyss quest. Uh, so it, it'll cost us 20 power and we have enough. Uh, we're going to get everybody to give us their reports. Looks like you can get some throne accessories as well when you do these uh, these resources, which is nice. So there you go. Some pyrophytes, some embryum, very exciting. Some rash vine, incredible. Those are definitely new things as well. We haven't gotten before. Let's send someone out to the hissing wastes. Inquisitor. Um, what else we got? We got the Western approach resources. Let's do work. that. We've managed to get through. Oh, hang on. Oh shit, guys! I have a quest up here. <laughs> I have a quest up here. According to Dorian, most of the Magisters are not Venatori supporters. They will also not raise a finger to prevent the Venatori from wrecking havoc in the south. There are some, however, who see the cult for what it is and are trying to expose it. A Magister contact in Karanus by the name of Mevaris Tilani is attempting to introduce, introduce a law in the Imperial Senate which would see Venatory activity sharply curtailed into winter. Dorian suggests that quiet Inquisition support of Mevaris would be beneficial and ultimately could drum up support from other Magisters fearful of what Corypheus represents. Uh, Cullen is not participating. Liliana says, let us arm the Magister against those who would oppose her vote. And uh, Josephine says, I have contacts into Vinter, although not many. Trading a few favors could help this Magister a great deal. Um, okay, I guess, well, I only have Josephine available. Let's send Josephine on At this one. Uh, turns out I had a mission after all. I was like, we've done everything. And this one's all tucked away in the corner in the dark. All right, they're, they're on their missions. Here lies the abyss. We're going to Adamant Fortress. Adamant Fortress has withstood countless Darkspawn attacks without falling. The Grey Wardens defending its walls are legendary warriors. To prevent Warden Commander Clarell from raising an army of demons, Inquisition forces will need siege engines powerful enough to breach Adamant's defenses. Our recommended level is 12 to 15, so I think we're like right in that recommended thing. Let's go. Adamant Fortress has stood against the Darkspawn since the time of the Second Blight. Fortunately for us, that means it was built before the age of modern siege equipment. A good trebuchet will do major damage to those ancient walls. And thanks to our Lady Ambassador... Lady Cyril of Jader was pleased to lend the Inquisition her sabers. They've already delivered the trebuchets. That is the good news. That is the good news. We've got trebuchets. None of that accounts for the Warden summoning a giant demon army. That is the bad news. The Inquisition forces can breach the gate, but if the Wardens already have their demons... I found records of Adamant's construction. There are choke points we can use to limit the field of battle. That's good. We may not be able to defeat them outright. But if we cut off reinforcements, we can carve you a path to Warden Commander Clarell. This will be bloody. So our plan is to lay siege to a legendary fortress filled with demons. It'll be hard fought, no way around it. But we'll get that gate open. It's also possible that some wardens may be sympathetic to our cause. The warriors may be willing to listen to reason, though I doubt they will turn against Clorel directly. The mages, however, are slaves to Corypheus. They will fight to the death. We've built the siege engines and readied our forces, Inquisitor. Give the word, and we march on Adamant. All right. Adamant Fortress has withstood countless dice one attacks. Let's fucking go. Power cost 20. We've got the Trebuchis. I can take care of some demons. Here lies the abyss. Let's go. Um, oh yes, party selection. Well... All right, we'll change things up now. Uh, unfortunately, Cassandra and Hawk didn't really have anything 
Um, which is kind of a shame. We got Black Wall with a little bit of stuff. We're going to bring Black Wall because this is Grey Warden stuff. We're going to bring Varric, uh, Black Wall, and, and Solus. That'll be our trio, I think. Um, I'd love... Actually... Oh, it's so tough to choose sometimes because I want to bring coal as well. I think it's it's really interesting because I choose my parties based on their contribution on like a story and dialogue potential. I don't give a fuck about make sure you always have a rogue or a warrior and a mage with you at all times because uh, that's play that's playing the game aspect, you know. I, I will accept a missed locked door or like a, a wall I can't crash down over the story and dialogue. Like we all choose different companions for different reasons and there's no set rules. I much prefer thinking about who's going to contribute the most uh, in terms of who they can interact with, you know? And it gets really tough at this point when you're like, ah, I want to bring Blackwall because we're going to a Grey Warden spot. I want to bring Varric. Because Hawk's going to be there. <laughs> and he's like my rogue. And I want to bring Solus because he's my mage boy. Um, instead, I think like I would love to also be able to bring Cole. Because I think Cole would have some cool stuff in terms of demonic presence, you know? I'm going to go with Varric, Blackwall, and Solus as my, as my three. So I do have my rogue, mage, and warrior. The good thing is, is that I can double up on warriors and rogues sometimes anyway because I am a mage but it's always good to have a couple of mages uh, if you want to uh, want to be laying down those heavy spells but really I think as long as you've got enough warriors or mages you'll be fine rogues are made out of paper mache ah! boom alright it's war time This is like Helm's Deep, but the Inquisition is the Urukai. Oh my god, yeah, it's like <laughs> see the ladders! Oh my god. <laughs> oh, they well, yep. I mean I called it as I saw it. That's funny. And look, we even have Grond. This is Dude, we've got the siege and we've got the battering ram. I love it when Dragon Age does Lord of the Rings. It was the same thing at Ostagar too. Ostagar was very Lord of the Rings to me. Awesome, let's go. Okay, Adamant Fortress. Oh, the Wardens! Get him, Cheese Wheel. Oh yes, we've got Alistair with us. Oh, hang on. Do we have Hawk with us? One is, more. is Hawk here as well? Because he said he came to deliver his report, but is he still involved? Oh, maybe he's not here. Maybe I could have brought Cole instead of Varric. Pull back! They're through! All right, Inquisitor. You have your way in. Best make use of it. We'll keep the main host of demons occupied for as long as we can. Okay. I'll be fine. Just keep the men safe. We'll do what we have to, Inquisitor. Warden Alistair will guard your back. Hawk is with our soldiers on the battlements. Okay. He's assisting them until you arrive. Oh, I thought I was about to, we were about to get Hawk There's going, hello, on the battlements, on the but no. Our men on the ladders can't get a foothold. If you can clear out the enemies on the battlements, we'll cover your advance. Damn it. I thought we were about to get, uh, like, Hawks up on the battlements and then we'd get Hawk going, hey! <laughs> but no. Instead, a demon. Um, okay, so we've got Alistair kind of in our party. He's a guest. Lovely. The cinematic, like, introduction there. How cool, right? All right. 
it, and it's playing like the main theme of Dragon Age, but like a fighting version of it. It's so cool. This is great. Uh, Solus has some abilities. One. Um, I'm gonna do this so we can get to Firestorm. The fighting version of this music is really well done. That's a great choice. Inscription upon a trebuchet stone, in flowing formal script, all who walk in the side of the Maker are one. An addendum underneath it, painted quickly and sloppily. Stick this in your tape, bloody! Incredible. I love the... that whole callback to, like, how they would put, like, messages uh, on bombs before they drop them, and it's like that same thing is carried on in so many different forms in media. On trebuchet rocks. Stay back. We will not be sacrificed for some insane ritual. <laughs> I got my advantageous high ground over what? here. Can't you see? This is madness. Yes, we've got Grey Wardens resisting. Good stuff. But the mages are all... Corypheus babies. Die! Keep your distance! The Inquisition is here to stop Clarell, not to kill Wardens. If you fall back, you won't be harmed. All right. My men will stay back. We want no part of this. Deal with Clarell as you must. Nice. Nicely done. I'm glad some of them could be reasoned with. Yeah, I think demanding their surrender is very like, you know, we're trying to like conquer them type deal and we're not. Um, everyone else actually has abilities here too. Um, we'll get opportunity knocks. Take advantage of their success, and then Blackwall, let's give you Counter-Strike. Full guard and taunting all nearby enemies. It's kind of funny because, like, the Grey Warden outfit is, um, you know, like the Battle Mage stuff. That's what I have I was wearing, and then I gave it to, uh, to Solus instead. So Solus is wearing the Grey Warden gear. I really like my dragon set, but like these are my two favorite armor sets in the game. I had to give my boyfriend my old clothes. Ooh. Masterwork Navarin sword grip. Is this on the yeah, this is up still. Up and around. The music is very well done for this section. I like it. What was that noise that that demon just made? It made us sound like Pingu. Black wall. How's the cheese wheel shield going? Very good, Inquisitor. That looks ominous out there.
How awkward are you? Fuck! I see Grey Wardens. Oh! I see dead Grey Wardens. Clear siege Clear points. The area around the ladder. So many rage demons, and I and I'd be out here with my goddamn fire staff. We're clear. Let's get to the next one. No, do we have to fight him? No. What if I just don't? What if we just go? Oh, my teammates are gonna fight them. Teammates, don't do it. Can I disengage? <laughs> disengage, guys. Don't kill them. Disengage. They'll realize the area of their ways. I love that that actually works. I'm like, stop attacking them. Just give them a scare. No, disengage. Don't do it. We'll go through here to the other. Yeah. You don't need to kill wardens. Oh god. Mages. It's always oh, mages. They got a pride demon. Uh, is that hawks fighting a pride demon? It's always blood mages. <laughs> I can't tell you what a fucking treat it is, like to to be able to fight with Alistair and Hawk against demons. We got two of our sassy kings with us right now as well. That's so good. Damn. Excuse me, what was that? Electro whip? Goodbye. Where's Hawk at? Hello? Inquisitor! Always a pleasure! Oh, there you are. Good work. Stay with my forces and see that they survive this. I'll keep the demons off them as best I can. Okay, good boy. An unsigned letter. Do the major seem different to you? Ever since they began summoning those demons, they don't talk to the rest of us. Have you been picked for one of the secret assignments yet? I can't imagine what they need us for if the mages can summon demons, but Jenner and Kemet appeared, disappeared last week, right after the ritual started. Nobody knows where they've gone. Stay ready. I'm not sure it's safe to talk anymore. Solus has another point. Might have missed that. Firestorm it is. Okay. All right, Hawk goes to protect my men. I got a Grey Warden banner. Nice. I don't really need it, uh, him to keep him off me. I'm good. Okay, on to the next siege point. So we can go down there or the siege point over here. We oh, yes. Aggressive, my inquisitor is in combat with the with the commands. Die! Takes a beating. That that electric whip thing. That's cool. Um, the pride demon is uh, frozen with anxiety. He's got stage fright. 
I think we paralyzed it, didn't we? It's poisoned, frozen, on fire, and paralyzed. It's fucking like every single status effect under the sun, dude. And panicked now. Amazing. Oh, it's, it's uh, laughing as it shields itself. That's so fun. Where's there? Nice. All right, this one's clear. We must hurry. Our forces cannot stand against the demons Ooh. for long. Cleansing rune and a sigil. Very, very nice. Good loot. Good loot, sir. Amulet of power. Um, she think? A couple of those, don't we? Coal only. Gained ability point when equipped. Paper lass only. And black wall only. Okay, I've got a couple. Yeah, have one of those. Uh, what amulet did I have on before? I need to pay attention to which <laughs> which stuff I actually had on. I think I had my amulet of magic. All right, uh, black wall. Um, you've currently got constitution, but here have an amulet of power. Put that back on. It's kind of weird that you have to do that. Give that one to Cole in the time. Um, I will. Might increase my energy barrage, actually. Each hit lowers the target's resistance to your magic type for a short time or deals additional damage, but all targets selected at random. Yeah, that's fine. I'll do that. Black wall. Um. You don't flinch, don't blink, and don't back down. Enemies that hit you are staggered. Train hard. You know how to make the most of whatever armor you're wearing. This this dude is like beefy. He's a beefy guy. That's for sure. A letter from Warden Commander Clarel. Magister Eremond. I am not an untutored apprentice. The great warden mages who left the circle just after their harrowing might take your explanations at face value, but I was an enchanter before I joined the Grey Wardens. That the sacrifices, the death, are necessary to bind the demons, I grant you. You know more of such things than I, and I make no judgment upon it. The manner of my mages since binding the demons is still unsettling. They answer my questions readily, but the words are spoken by rote, and several of the non-mages have complained that their comrades seem cold and unfeeling since the ritual. Some of that is natural, I grant you. One cannot kill a brother and come away unchanged. But if there is more to this, I will have it from you. The Inquisition presses us to action. Continue the rituals. If we must destroy them before we venture into the deep roads, so be it. But do not lie to me, Eremond. I stand against the Blight, and no man, no Inquisitor, and no Magister will get in my way. They're ready to march into the deep roads to go uh, Archdemon hunting. Okay. Let's go. Shield of the Anointed. What is this? Granted anointed status by Divine Rosamond in the 65th year of the Exalted Age, Clothil of Crecci was a warrior renowned for defending the innocent. Popularly depicted with a shaven head, Clothild was often mistaken for a man and is most famous for not fighting, but protesting the tyrannical Baron of Rosfort's taxes on the poor. She was arrested, but the Divine ordered her released before she could be executed. Okay. Um. All right. All right, cheese wheel. You've had your fun, cheese wheel. All right, 
Looks like a straight shot. Um, okay. Uh, hello? You just teleported? Do you have anything to say before we open this door, or are you just... Are you supposed to be here? Okay, you're wanting to walk into the wall? Okay. What the fuck? I feel like... Why does it feel like he was supposed to say something, you know what I mean? I'm just gonna... I'm actually just gonna reload my save, like, just in case. Like, that... that stands out to me. That feels weird. Like, he just popped in out of nowhere. It feels like he should say something at the very least, right? Otherwise, I'm not sure. It's a good thing I saved just here. Someone help. Right, shall we get that wheel again? Let's get that shield and replace that wheel. Shield of the Anointed. Okay, black wall. Shield for you, sir. And naturally, we're almost full on our inventory once again. Alright. So, Hawk's gonna just like pop in, apparently. Okay, now he's not here. I, was he supposed to appear? Now I don't even think he was supposed to appear, but he just did? Oh no, there he is. He's behind me. What the fuck? Okay, so, okay. I guess I... Fewer thanks to you. Hawk saved a lot of lives on the battlements, Inquisitor. Oh, there you go. Nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he actually does say something. Hold the path open for us as long as possible, Inquisitor. Our forces are ready when you are. It's so cool. All right. I guess I was just fretting. I was like, uh, are you supposed to be here or not? You know what I mean? But yeah, he was supposed to, I guess, come in from behind us, and we weren't supposed to see him teleport. Oh shit. Wardens, we are betrayed by the very world we have sworn to protect. The Inquisition is inside, Clarel. We have no time to stand on ceremony. These men and women are giving their lives, Magister. That might mean little in Tavinta, but for the Wardens, it is a sacred duty. It has been many long years, my friend. Too many, Clarel. If my sword arm can no longer serve the Wardens, then my blood will have to do. It will. Stop them! We must complete the ritual! I'm going to defeat you with the power of words! Clarell, if you complete that ritual, you're doing exactly what Eremond wants. What? Fighting the Blight? Keeping the world safe from Darkspawn? Who wouldn't want that? And yes, the ritual requires blood sacrifice. Hate me for that if you must, but do not hate the Wardens for doing their duty. We make the sacrifices no one else will. Our warriors die proudly for a world that will never thank them. And then he binds your mages to Corypheus. Corypheus? But he's dead. These people will say anything to shake your confidence, Clarell. Bring it through!
Clarell really trusted this evil looking motherfucker. Please! I have seen more than my share of blood magic. It is never worth the cost. I helped fight the Archdemon in Ferelden. Could you consider listening to me? Be ready with the ritual, Clarell. This demon is truly worthy of your strength. Oh, special. All Grey Wardens will be hostile. They will not help fight the demon army. Or... Oh, here we go. <clears throat> oh, wow. Okay, hang on. Think of the Warden's legacy. Using my book smarts. Blackwall, talk to them. Some Wardens may see reason. Innocent Wardens may be spared. I spared Wardens before. Oh, there's two. Oh, man. There's a Blackwall one. And then, okay. I'm really tempted for these two. All right, I feel drawn to this one. Let's see what Blackwall's got to say. Blackwall, can you talk some sense into them? You don't know me, but you may have heard my name. Like you, I've given my life to the Grey Wardens. The first time I put on this armor, I felt like I belonged, like I was part of something honorable. Something with a purpose. I know how good that feels. How safe. But fighting and dying here today won't stop the blight. If you want to stop the blight, kill that bastard up there. His master is the living embodiment of its corruption. That's a fucking speech, man. Let's go Blackwall. Morel, we have come so far. You're the only one who can do this. Perhaps we could test the truth of these charges to avoid more bloodshed. Or perhaps I should bring in a more reliable ally. My master thought you might come here, Inquisitor. He sent me this to welcome you. He can just summon it. Like a dog whistle? Oh my dear lord. Hey, Chlorel, do you not see this? Yeah, Chlorel, do you, I think you just realized that you just fucked up. Hello, Archdemon Dragon. Look what you did. Yes, nice work. Quick, stab him before you get eaten. No, no, no. Go for him instead. Oh, shit. Inquisitor. Yeah. Damn right. Oh my god. Hello. Yes, we've got the we got the Grey Warden's help. Blackwall, dude. What a speech. Good shit. He makes me sorry that I doubt him. Honestly, that was a that was a good thing to for him to say. He nailed it. Look at that big boy. Oh my lord. That was a good time to cast that barrier, holy shit. I would have liked to have seen all of those options, but honestly, uh, I'm happy with the one that I chose, definitely. Ouch, I'm being nuked. Once again. Yeah. 
All it takes is an Archdemon coming down from the sky for Clarell to go, oh, wait a minute. Hang on. What have I done? Yes, Hawk, what are you doing? Are you okay? Would you like to get into the fight? Hawk and Alistair needed a breather for a second there. How do we get out of here? <gasps> what the fuck? Is that a giant spider? I'm trying to look at like what this is in here. Cause like I'm trying to peek through the image. That looks like a spider with a thousand eyes. All right, you want to hold off? Whoa, oh, hang on, I can pause. You can pause. What the fuck is going on in there? Is it a bunch of, is it like multiple demonic spiders? Cause what the, f look at that. Whoa. Okay. All right. Sure. That's badass. That was going on in there. That's a fucking spider party. All right, pursue Clarell. the flapping wings and we get bombed again. It's like red lyrium fucking blasts. Like what is how? It's, you need like the shattering of it. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> That's fucking holy shit. Get him. Get him! They are ascending. Uh, we got two Grey Wardens with us and a bunch of other Grey Wardens in Clarell. Maybe we can take down this Archdemon together. It seems possible. I'm calling it an archdemon because it, it seems to be the assumed, you know. You, you've destroyed the Grey Wardens. Ooh. <laughs> why would you do why? That yourself. Stupid bitch! Huh. Don't stand by the edge. Are you stupid? All I did was dangle a little power before your eyes, and you couldn't wait to get your hands bloody. Push him off the edge. What? Do why you stood by the edge? Oh, I'm just waiting for you to get eaten now. Don't do it, Clarell. The big dragon flying in the sky. You served a new god. I will never serve the blight. I was waiting for it. God damn, I was waiting for it. God, this cutscene is so choppy. No, oh God. Oh, hang on, she's still alive. Oh, you're playing with your food. In war, victory. In peace, vigilance. Oh, nice. Clarell! Oh, 
buddy. Okay, Jesus. Oh God. I just opened a rift. I just opened a rift out of desperation. Alistair fell with me. I just opened a fucking rift. No shit. Oh, ouchie. Oh, never mind. Whoa. Oh, oh cool. I can't believe it. We're tapping into the powers of our anchor. Uh, well, this is unexpected. Oh, that is weird. We were falling. Oh, shit. Hawk's in here, too. If this is the afterlife, the Chantry owes me an apology. This looks nothing like the Maker's bosom. <laughs> no. This is the fade. Oh, we're all here. Wow, that's so cool. We're all here. The Inquisitor opened a rift. We came through and survived. I never thought I would ever find myself here physically. Look, the Black City, almost close enough to touch. Oh, hang on. Oh, Varric can't be here. Oh, no, yes, he can. Dwarves can be physically in the Fade due to weird shit because they've been in there before. Is Varric and Blackwall here? We've had dwarves in the Fade before, and it's just kind of like a funny, like, breaking the rules thing. Um, damn, okay. We've used the power of the Anchor to physically bring us into the Fade, because that's what it allows us to do. But we brought others with us as well. I thought it was just Alistair. I only saw Alistair fall with me. Got a full crew. Oh my god. This must be very exciting for you, Solus. Any advice you have on what exactly is going on would be wonderful. What spirit commands this place? I have never seen anywhere like it. It's not how I remember the Fade, either. Perhaps it's because we're here, physically, instead of just dreaming. The stories say you walked out of the Fade at Haven. Was it like this? Yo, this is so cool. I don't know. I still can't remember what happened the last time I did this. Well, whatever happened at Haven, we can't assume we're safe now. That huge demon was right on the other side of that rift Eremond was using. And there could be others. In the real world, the rift with the demons in it was nearby, in the main hall. Can we get out the same way? It beats waiting around for demons to find us, right? There. Let's go. Aha! Yes! Hey, Varric, what's it like? <laughs> cool. This is fascinating. It is not the area I would have chosen, of course. But to physically walk within the Fade. <sighs> right. You like it here. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> yes, literally. I don't suppose you have any words of wisdom for this part of the Fade? Why would I ever voluntarily come to this part of the Fade? The demon that controls this area is extremely powerful. Some variety of fear, I would guess. I suggest you remain wary of its manipulations and prepare for what is certain to be a fascinating experience. Oh, I'm prepared. For a fascinating experience, all right. Wow, all right, we're all here. Look at this. Such an interesting collection of things. I love the creativity of having no center of gravity in the fade. Like, you've, everyone's just kind of landed at different orientations. Did we get any codex entries? No. 
Also, having a dialogue wheel pop up when we're not in direct um, cutscene is really interesting. This is so cool. Weird. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> I'm so glad that we brought Varric actually now. Oh, but bringing Cole would make this so cool. You see what I mean? Like every every companion, like just has so much value to be brought. I think. Like, damn it. <laughs> Cole would have, like, so much to say here, but then Blackwall was so useful with the Grey Wardens, and then, like... There must be something here. Varric is amazing with the fact that we've actually brought him in physically into the Fade. All so good. Fears of the Dreamers, the Pilgrim. I came to the Temple of Sacred Ashes with the Faithful, ready to help at the Conclave. I prayed to the Maker for peace, but the mountain shook and fell and buried me. Alone in the darkness, my legs crushed. I cried in fear of a world with no Maker, fading in and out of dreams of monsters inside the black. Light my final hours. Let me go to the Maker without the terrors of darkness confounding me. So the fears of people that perished. Let's look around. Uh, at the conclave. Ugh, the, the fuck. Okay, weird. Candle. Okay. Present the item to the pilgrim. Ah, oh, this. Oh, and I get permanent stat boosts. Dream of fears erased. Okay. Looking around. A plea from the warrior to the spirits. The wolves were our allies in the old days before Andraste, before the Maker. We knew this to be so, but man grew tired of the chase, the hunt, the truth of fang and steel and blood. Man put seeds in the ground, tended cattle and chickens, and built fences to keep the wolves away. Man bred hounds that would heal and sit and obey, and told himself that the hounds were just as good. Now the darkspawn come again. They break our fences, kill our cattle and chickens, burn our crops. Our dogs cower with tails between their legs, or if they fight, they fall to the poison of darkspawn blood. We are dying, and I am shamed by my cowardice. The ways of man and hound are not enough. I come to you, spirits of the old forest. I who built fences, I who came with fire and steel to drive you away. I come to you because fear has made my arms weak. I ask you for unforgiving rage to make them strong again. Kill the hound in my heart, and grow strong from the meat on its bones. In its place, give me the wolf. Words caught in the bloody ripples of ancient water in the Fade somehow remembered. Wow. Damn, this is a bad time to have an almost full inventory, isn't it? All right, I'll have to just, I'll just destroy some stuff if need be. Hastily written note. Maker, give me strength. When the darkspawn came to Denerim, I wept so hard that I could not see, but still I fought for you. When demons poured from the sky where the Temple of Sacred Ashes used to stand, my hand shook so badly that I could not aim my bow, but still I fought for you. When Corypheus and his archdemon destroyed Haven and killed my friends, I screamed until I had no voice, but still I fought for you. They are sending me to attack Adamant. They say that the fortress is defended by an army of demons, and the odds are grim. We cannot win, but our distraction, our sacrifice, may give the important people the chance to do what is necessary. My stomach is knotted, and I see dead friends from old battles reaching out for me every time I close my eyes. I am so afraid, Maker, but still, I will fight for you. Writer unknown. Oh. Getting insight into... Uh the people within the Inquisition. What are we looking at here? Oh, cool. We get to see the fears on the map. That's nice, at least. Don't have to worry about missing them. It's times like this that I kind of miss what we used to be able to do in... Um, 
in previous Bioware games where you could talk to your companions while you're in the field and not at like hub locations. You know, I'd be like, what do you have to say? We'd, we'd be able to have like situational dialogue take place. I kind of miss that, you know? Walking the Fade, Frozen Moments. I once studied the Fade as a scholar, dissecting it as a child might a rat or a frog. I was young and craved the power conquering the Fade could bring. I tried in vain to chart its paths, and when that failed, I attempted to secure them. In my arrogance, I struggled against the Fade's very nature. How does one pin down a dream? How can one control a thought so that it might travel always the same course from conception to completion? Only when I let go of my desires and humbled myself was the Fade open to me. The spirits came and took it upon themselves to be my guides, my lanterns in the darkness. At their command, the paths grew still, and I could walk them again and again. I was shown vast oceans, containing not water, but memories, drawn from the minds of dreamers. I drifted through frozen moments like paintings, perfect in each detail. As I explored this impossible realm, the spirits kept darker things at bay. I came to trust them, even love them, and I saw my own love reflected in them. To know the Fade, one cannot seek to master it. The Fade is the master, the teacher. We are merely apprentices. Writings of Magister Callistus of uh, Taravin, Taravin, known to some as Callistus the Fade Touched. Um, these items are not marked by a simple uh, search either. So I've got to keep my eye out. I wouldn't linger here. Oh, is this an Illuvian? It's a shattered Illuvian. Illuvian, sorry, I should say. Hey, someone get Meryl. I'm sure we can give her some pieces to super glue to her mirror. Oh, that is so cool. Okay. I'm gonna explore every inch of this place. Actually, can we... Can we investigate this table? I didn't know if it would be like, uh, investigate. Actually, I was like, wait a minute, that actually stands out, but no. Worth checking. Ooh. What? That can't be. I greet you, Warden. And you, Champion. Divine Justinia. Is she dressed fancy? Whoa. Okay, so she's just like... Yes, here I am. I've just been waiting here. Ooh, that, that is an interesting statement. This could be a trick. This could most certainly be a trick. Ooh, but what if the explosion at the Conclave opened a rift? Because obviously it opened the breach in the sky, but what if there was also... What if Divine Justinia was sucked in physically into the Fade and she's not dead? It could be a trick. She could be physically in the Fade. Oh, you can never... You can never tell in the Fade. I'm just going to say I don't understand. Back at Haven, I saw... I thought I saw... How can you be here? She isn't. Things in the Fade have a tendency to show up looking like people you know. Demons, mostly. You think my survival impossible. Yet, here you stand alive in the Fade yourselves. In truth, proving my existence either way would require time we do not have. Really? How hard is it to answer one question? I'm a human, and you are... I am here to help you. You do not remember what happened at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, Inquisitor. Was Hawk doing a, uh, a looking up in the sky cross-eyed just then? But I, I wish we could see the, the front of his face. I don't know why my characters are doing that lately. 
<laughs> Interesting. I don't know. I kind of. It might. I think it's her. But this is. Yeah, true. The real divine would have no way of knowing that I'd been made Inquisitor. I know. Because I have examined memories like yours, stolen by the demon that serves Corypheus. It is the nightmare you forget upon waking. It feeds off memories of fear and darkness, growing fat upon the terror. The false calling that terrify the wardens into making such grave mistakes? It's work. I'd like to have a few words with this nightmare about that. You will have your chance, brave warden. This place of darkness is its lair. Oh, I love Dragon Age, dude. I love Dragon Age so much. Oh my god. Like, I just can't even... Without just gushing, like... Love Dragon Age, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> it's just so good. Corypheus seems to have a lot of demons at his disposal. How does he command so many? I know not how he commands his army of demons. His power may come from the Blight itself, but the Nightmare serves willingly. For Corypheus has brought much terror to this world. He was one of the Magisters who unleashed the first Blight upon the world, was he not? Every child's cry as the Archdemon circles. Every dwarf's whimper in the deep roads. The nightmare has fed well. Oh, crap. How do we hurt it? That's a little optimistic, isn't it? You hurt it by escaping the Fade and leading your people against Corypheus. That wasn't what I meant. I know. But for now, it is the best answer I can give you. When you entered the Fade at Heaven, the demon took a part of you. Before you do anything else, you must recover it. These are your memories, Inquisitor. Oh. Oh. We're going through memories. Okay. I should have known that asking about harming a, a demon would still... Because, yeah, Solus is like... Yeah. <laughs> I get it, man. That's an understandable disapproval. It's actually... Well, mm, I want to trust it. I think it might be the Divine who got sucked in physically into the Fade when the Conclave exploded, when everything went wrong. Look at that fancy pants outfit. All right, we got a nightmare. Very cool. I love that drawing to represent a nightmare. My friends, we accept as fact that more powerful intelligent demons select more complex aspects of our reality to observe and interact with. A demon of pride may gravitate to the corrupt hubris of nobles, bloodthirsty arrogance of soldiers, or sadly, the blind confidence of mages. A demon of desire may focus on lust, greed, or even the desperate wishes of those with no recourse in the waking world. Whether demons are naturally inclined to such specificity, or made so by observing a confluence of specific events in our world, it is a subject of much debate, and not the question my experiment would answer. Instead, I turn to the question of fear. We think of fear demons as lesser creatures, powerful but simple, like those common beasts of rage or hunger. But fear has many faces, from the absurd phobias of the pampered nobility to the very real threats of magic, demons, dragons, and perhaps especially the Blight. What event has shaped the course of human history more than the Blight's? Had the first Blight not weakened it, the Tevinter Imperium would have crushed Andraste's rebellion, we would have no Ferelden, no Circles, and indeed, no Chantry as we know it. The Blight is unequaled as a force of devastation and terror, hated and feared by peasant and king alike from the northern hills of the Anderfels to the southern reaches of the Kolkari Wilds. 
I know of nothing else that inspires such universal and specific fear. Dragons and demons, yes, but both have found respect and fascination in cultures across Thedas. Only the Blight is an unadulterated source of horror. If there exists a demon of fear who has shaped itself into a more intelligent, more specific mold, it will be a demon focusing on fear of the Blight. This is the experiment I undertake. By the time you read this, my friends, I will be asleep, traveling through the Fade to find such a creature. If I am correct, it will yield an unparalleled source of information on the history of our world, wisdom hidden since the time of ancient Tevinta. I have instructed the scribes to write quickly upon my return. I will have much to impart. A, less, a letter found beside the sleeping body of senior enchanter Jessamir, her last known communication before her subsequent possession and then death, along with 12 mages, 9 templars, and an uncounted apprentices and tranquil at the hands of knight captain Hulgar. Wow. We only have a short time. Ask what you must. I have six questions for you. Well, five. So, can you tell me who... what you are? I told you. I am helping you. Yes, but are you her, or some kind of fade remnant of her? Or a spirit imitating her? Our world is never that simple. What if the answer is none of those things? Or all of them? I am what the Maker made me. The question is, are you what the Maker made you, Inquisitor? Oh, that's exactly what a, re a head of a religion would say. You are definitely the Divine Justinia. She's like, <laughs> such a non-answer. God damn it. I am here, not here, and maybe everywhere. I am in your heart, child. Santa Claus. I was meant to become the Inquisitor. But what is the Inquisitor? And how will she change the world? You believe in your purpose, and that is good. That is your power. You still haven't answered my question. What are you? I am what you see. All other answers rest in you. But she, she could potentially be, because considering we're about to traverse through my memory, she could also just be my memory of Justinia. From the beginning of the game. Oh, no, there's more questions. I love it. So, all of this is just a dream? Part of the fade? It is not just a dream. The minds of mankind are made real here. Their hopes, their loves, and their fears. What changes their world also changes this one. And yours are footsteps that move mountains in both. Tread carefully, Inquisitor. This ground is more treacherous than you know. Mm. Okay. I'd like to know more about the nightmare. It is not simply fear. It is the terror you cannot remember, the horror your mind erases to protect you. When old memories no longer make the veteran soldier's hand tremble, it is because the nightmare has taken them. Most people avoid their fears. It is simple for the demon to steal the darkest fragments. They forget, and it feeds. Corypheus has helped it grow monstrous. It makes people forget the worst parts of their fears. It almost sounds like the nightmare is helping people. Perhaps it was, once. But now, it helps none but Corypheus. By his hand, it creates more fear and grows even stronger. In any case, robbing people of their fears is never a kindness. At best, it is a mistake born of compassion. Without fear, and pain, and failure, we cannot learn. We cannot grow. As you cannot grow until you recover all that was taken from you. Tell me why you're here. Why take part in this? After heaven, I hid here. I watched quietly, learned what I could, and searched for some way to help. And then you came. I don't know what that means. Corypheus and the Nightmare do an injustice to the world. You must stop them. 
Perhaps you were meant to stop them. Perhaps that is why I am here. You must know what really happened at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. As must you. Hm. The answer lies in your memories. Lost to the nightmare when you last walked the Fade. Or you could just tell me. Would you trust my words? Trust what you have seen. What can you tell me about this mark on my hand? Recover your memories to learn how the mark came to be upon your hand. As for what it is, it is the needle that pulls the thread, as well as the key. I don't understand. It is the needle that passes through the veil, as little else can. You are the thread, and it is the key that locks or unlocks a door to the Fade. It lets you walk in the Fade physically, and survive. Without it, Corypheus must find another way to the Black City. It is part of you now, and cannot be removed without your death. Goodbye. We should keep moving. Interesting things to think about. I can feel my my brain pushing against the walls of my skull. I have a headache. <laughs> Whenever I get a headache, I can't wear my glasses. It like makes my headache worse. We only have a short time. Ask what you must. We should keep moving. How you doing up there, Varric? All right, let's recover our first memory. I like that it makes that effect. Run where you can! Warn them! Ah! My ears! Jesus! Why do they make the voice lines for the memory so loud? All right, everyone. Prepare your ear holes. What's going on here? What's going on here? Okay. So it's just leading up to the explosion because we were caught there at the wrong time. Ooh, this reminds us. Well, this reminds me. This reminds me. The opening cutscene of this game after making our character was us running up the scare staircase scare staircase uh scurrying away from demonic creatures and a silhouette in this form this silhouette reached out for us right and then we get our codex entry at the beginning of the game which is divine justinia and i'm like this is the same silhouette and that's why I, and I ran with that from the start. Obviously we've seen a lot of other people in that same silhouette, but she was there. Divine Justinia was there. Um, and everyone's like, we're the Herald of Andraste, right? And chosen by her. But I think we were just saved slash chosen slash assisted by Justinia because she was, she was there, you know, she was there. And it makes a lot of sense. And we walked in while things were happening. Prepare your ears. Oh. Bring forth the sacrifice. Corypheus in my ears. Oh, we're seeing it. Wait. Grey Wardens. Now is the hour of our victory. Why are you doing this? You, of all people. Keep the sacrifice still. Someone, help me! Touched the Palantir! Oh my god. Which 
caused the explosion. So that mark on your hand, it wasn't sent by Andraste. It came from that orb Corypheus was using. Corypheus intended to rip open the veil, use the anchor to enter the Fade, and throw open the doors of the Black City. Not for the old gods, but for himself. When you disrupted his plan, the orb bestowed the anchor upon you instead. Oh man, well we knew it wasn't Andraste, that was obvious because like Corypheus had already explained that it was a mistake and that we were there at the wrong time. So cool to see that um, actually take place though. We touched the orb, we pondered a little too hard and then we got the, the mark. That's really neat. Okay. Okay then. So Justinia was being used as a sacrifice for the spell to tear open uh, the veil and go boop, go visit the Black City. But there were Grey Wardens. Um, hmm. And I'm a little confused about that. Did he have a little pocket of like a little cell of corrupted Grey Wardens already? Oh. Ooh, actually, that, that makes sense. If he, if these were like the same, if there were other Grey Wardens who maybe went down to where Corypheus was killed down in the Legacy DLC, and then he was like, ah, and then he like got a little posse of Grey Wardens with him. That kind of could explain that, I suppose. My brain is just we're in the we're in the big brain stuff right now. I never thought Andraste did this. I did this myself through my actions. No maker required. And now you may be certain. You cannot escape the lair of the nightmare until you regain all that it took from you. You have recovered some of yourself. But now, it knows you are here. You must make haste. I will prepare the way ahead. What's wrong, Hawk? I wondered if you might be concerned about the Grey Wardens holding the Divine in that vision. Their actions led to her death. I assumed Corypheus took their minds. You've seen it happen yourself. Come on, you can add it to the things to yell at the Wardens about when we get out of here. Oh, I intend to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never met the Divine. You think that was really her? We have survived in the Fade physically. Perhaps she did as well. Or, if it is a spirit that identifies so strongly with Justinia that it believes it is her, how can we say it is not? Whatever she is, she seems to want to help us. And the Nightmare? From what she said, I don't look forward to meeting it. Sounds like it preys on fear. Stealing people's memories, that's low, even for a demon. Fear is a very old, very strong feeling. It predates love, pride, compassion, every emotion. Save perhaps desire. Be wary, the Nightmare will do anything in its power to weaken our resolve. But after what it did to the Wardens, it's going to learn to fear for itself. Oh, some very, very satisfying, very, very satisfying uh, dialogue here. Oh my god. We big brain and Yeah, so Hawk had, was on the same... Me and Hawk, man, we're just... He is me and I am him. We were both thinking about the Grey Warden thing. We're both, like, pondering that. We're like... Mm. <laughs> uh, I just feel like what's really cool about uh, Dragon Age, and I feel like especially Inquisition after playing Origins in Dragon Age 2, is I just feel so locked in. Like, I feel wired to everything that's going on. Not in a fact where it's like I have a perfect understanding of everything that's going on, but when it is happening and when we're being given things, it just clicks. Like, we're just very wired into what is going on in, in Dragon Age. And it's such a such a pleasure to share that with a bunch of other people that are also so passionate about Dragon Age and love the story and love the world. Because we get to just gush over how cool Dragon Age is. 
and it is is definitely uh, an absolute privilege. I'm very grateful uh, for those of you that choose to watch my adventure through Thetis over these uh, over these past um, two games and now this third one because it's been my kind of longest almost consecutive adventure on the channel. We had like almost 50 episodes for Dragon Age Origins. Um, we had uh, 20, 24, 25 episodes for Dragon Age 2. And I think this is like the longest game yet, uh, apparently. So we're in for a pretty significant journey. And then there's uh, the new Dragon Age game uh, as well. So I, I think once all everything's said and done, I think this is like sort of like the longest consecutive um, story uh, in, a, in a connected series, right? that I've had the pleasure of playing on the channel so far. A letter written in a shaking hand. Son, by the time you read this, the Darkspawn poison will have claimed me. We gave all at Starkhaven, and we bought time for the Wardens to slay the Archdemon, but when I smelled the corruption in my wound, I knew I would not live to see you again. The letter to Sebastian, I assume? Ferus will want men to search the battlefield. He sees Starkhaven as rising to greatness, and the weapons of a hundred dead Grey Wardens lying unclaimed on the ground will help him conquer the Free Marchers. He must refuse. The battlefield is soaked in poison, and no speech, no bullying, no taunts about cowardice can change that. Anything that roams that battlefield now will die. Stall him however you must, and watch for the crows. Those birds have the good sense to fear the blight. When you see them gather, then you will know that the poison is gone, and it is safe to search the battlefield for trinkets to satisfy Ferus. Ferus, Firus, I will not be here to guide you, son, so you must learn from the crows. They watch patiently, and they let their fear keep them alive. Please, I beg you, watch the crows and do the same. Sora. I cause it just mentions Stark Haven. I'm assuming this is like addressed to Sebastian. But then they're talking about following, like, watching the the Antivan crows as well. Uh, we're at, we're at full inventory time. We already have an enhanced um, Immolate Ring. I've got it on. But I don't know if it is, like, the same one. I'm going to destroy this ring and replace it with this one and just see if it's the same. Oh, I mean, it is. I could just read it in here, couldn't I? What do you mean my inventory is full? Oh, stuff you have equipped doesn't count as, like, stuff that... Never mind, then. All right, let me put that ring back on. Um, yeah, I'll probably have to start um, destroying some stuff. Because it's been a, a long adventure without a merchant. They got any merchant demons out there? Ah, we have a visitor. Some silly little girl comes to steal the fear I kindly lifted from her shoulders. You should have thanked me and left your fear where it lay, forgotten. You think the pain will make you stronger. What fool filled your mind with such drivel? The only one who grows stronger from your fears is me. But you are a guest here in my home, so by all means, let me return what you have forgotten. Ah, oh, there's a deep, booming voice. I can hear it in my ass. Oh my god. Why is it so loud? Sir? You don't have to yell. Right. All right, let's all have a bath in the fade juice. I expected worse. These are but minor servants of the nightmare. Pity. Claws of Dumat. Master unveiled a new altar. It stands higher than a man, like a great statue, and great spikes jut out from its length, hungry for blood. 
Master calls it the Claw of Dumat and says that the altar will help bring Tevinter to glory. I praised it, as was expected, and Master smiled. It was good to see him smile again. He has been fearful of late, vexed by the loss of followers. He has met with other priests, and in secret I have heard them dis discussing ways to return the people of Tevinter to the ways of the old god, as is only just. He smote... Ooh, he spoke to me later in the day and asked that I call him Corypheus, as it was the name he would take for himself after a ritual. Master, now Corypheus, told me that my people, the elves of old, were tied to the Fade, and that in order to carry out the will of Jamart, he would need to call upon the magic that lives in our blood. Corypheus told me to gather all of the elven servants and bring them to the western hall of our home at midnight. That is the hall where the claw of Dumart is now kept. There are shackles across the top of the great altar and pools lined with runes beneath the claws. I have sent my wife and children away. I have not warned the others. A few I may save. If I tried to save us all, we would only be killed in some other way and others would die in our place. Master once laughed and joked. He could be stern, but he was not a cruel man. The weakening of the temples brought fear into his heart, and that fear has changed him. The cuts upon his arms are deeper and longer where he used his blood magic more often. He speaks to his wife little. He listens only to the voices in his dreams. It is almost midnight. The claw of Dumart, great and spiked and merciless, is all my mind can see. We must gather the others. My family is safe. Corypheus will take me, but not those I love. Words somehow preserved in blood at the statue's base. Far out. So the elvish connection, and then we've got the um, the elf, uh, the elvish orb, which was what he was using as well. Oh, let's go away. What am I? Oh my god! What am I getting? It's not these scrolls? Hello? Oh. Flowers. Okay. Oh, and then I... Oh, present the item to the free holder. Oh, cool. I don't have to go back to... <laughs> That's good. I don't have to go all the way back to the start to give it to uh, that table. It's good to know. Investigate. Fears of the dreamers, the freeholder. I watched the blight take my land. I had nowhere to go. I tended the fields as I had, even as my flock died and my family sickened. My body racked by pains and chills. I saw too late the poison that had crept into the land. In my fever dreams, the sickness covered this whole world, and I wept in fear for the family I killed with my foolish pride. Show me that this world survives. Show me that the poison does not take everything. What are me? What are we? We're going over this way, I think. This is where we're going. We're in a full fade adventure. See, they they figured out how to make the fade so much more enjoyable and interesting to navigate. But it's also we have a lot more um, investment into the game story and world at this point. That when we were sent into the fade by the sloth demon in Dragon Age Origins, it was like, what do you mean I have to turn into a rat? <laughs> and transform into these weird forms in order to progress. But they've always kept it consistent that whenever you're in the Fade, you can get permanent uh, increases to your stats, <laughs> which is funny. Shattered Alluvian Mirrors, dude. Watch out! I don't know what those are, but they're coming our way! They're spiders, Varric. I'm pretty sure you've seen those before. <laughs> we 
Okay. I'm not familiar with this. Except from a journal. They think they own us. Think they decide whether we live or die. They sit there smug in their armor, ready to cut off our heads for the slightest transgression. As though we don't strive every day to stay sane, to keep the demons away. They can't control us any longer. I won't go back to the circle, not ever. I thought about it last night, being back in the tower, their eyes on me, and all of it came back, all the years, head down, don't clench your fingers, be a good mage, be a quiet mage, and I realized I don't want to make peace with the Templars, I want them to burn, want it so badly that the bed caught fire and wouldn't go out until Avan iced it all over. It's still there inside me, I want them to feel the fear they made me feel, I want them to know what it's like, I'm leaving for the Conclave in a few hours, if those bastards so much as blink the wrong way I'll let them see what an apostate looks like. Okay, hello. Uh, I feel like that's the perspective, right, on mages versus Templars that Vivian doesn't have. She lacks that, like, actual perspective of the people that, like, are on the bottom and in and actually suffering um, while she gets to be first enchanter, you know? Like, she needs to read that shit. And there's a pathway. I need to keep looking at the map because there's a pathway. Yeah. Actually, that looks like this is the way that we're supposed to go. I'll come back and we'll read that in a second. If I had an opportunity to swap out parties right now, though, I would I would bring Cole in here for sure. Perhaps I should be afraid. Facing the most powerful members of the Inquisition. <laughs> like Blackwall. Ah, there's nothing like a Grey Warden, and you are nothing like a Grey Warden. I'll show you a Warden's strength, beast. You're nothing like a Grey Warden. Oh my god, we're getting jump scared by exploding flaming corpses. Hmm, interesting word there. Once again, Hawk is in danger because of you, Varric. You found the Red Lyrium. You brought Hawk here. Just keep talking, Smiley. Mm, I really like that we've got people, like, preying on our fears here. This is good. God, I want to know what... I want to know what Vivian's fears are. I want to know what Cole's fears are. I want to... I, again, just... I've... I just want to bring everyone. I want to bring everyone. The dialogue's so damn good. It's so damn good. Okay, that was that. Now we can go back onto the road again. Oh, never mind. Blackhole, do your job as a warrior, please. Doth ma herelan, ma banal in asalin, marsolas in amardin. Unal nadas. Oh come on, guys! Don't have your secret little conversations. Ah, oh, what a solace fear. Assholes. Assholes. What does he fear? Why would you do it in Elvish? Why would you do that? God damn it. I don't have a full translation on hand, please. Ugh. Except from a journal. I went to Davinta when I was a child. 
I remember dragon statues everywhere, big ones. I shivered as I walked between them, afraid they were going to bite me or breathe fire. My parents hushed me and told me the Magisters liked the dragons as a sign of their power. Dragons are beasts, mindless, terrible. The archdemon that comes with each blight is an offense to the Maker. We know all these things, but the Magisters don't care. And it is the same with the mages. So much danger, so much power and hands not ready for it. The mages only wish to celebrate themselves. The magisters are what the mages of Freldon and Orlay want to be. Our rulers holding us in terror so that we wonder if they will bite us as we walk by them. I joined the Templars to keep such mages under control. I have killed many since the rebellion we all saw coming. Now the divine wishes us to meet them at the conclave and give them a chance to make peace. I will go. I will smile. But if the dragon statue looks ready to bite, I will strike first. I am not a child and I will not be afraid. So we get journals from a mage and journal from a Did you think you mattered, Hawk? Did you think anything you ever did mattered? You couldn't even save your city. How could you expect to strike down a god? Isabella is going to die, just like your family and everyone you ever cared about. Well, that's going to grow tiresome quickly. <laughs> you matter to me, babe. You're my shiny, bold hunk of a humorous hog. Don't worry. Is this narcissistic? <laughs> mm. Is my love for a hawk my love for myself that I've always wanted? Have I finally figured out how to love myself? Through a Those video were game character? Tiny manifestations spawned from the nightmare itself. And of course they look like giant spiders. Spiders? Oh. That is not what I saw. Remember. We walk in the Fade. Demons of fear shape their appearance to unnerve each of us. Wonderful. So I see spiders. Blackwall doesn't. Oh, that's cool. What do you guys see? I love that. That's a that's a neat little line right there. How cool. God, this is very great. Isn't it? Uh... Oh. The nightmare is closer now. It knows you seek escape. With each moment, it grows stronger. Okay. Um, anyone need to drink up? Oh, actually, I'll do that after we, uh... After we fight. Even though they're just lowly demons. We're recovering memories once more. There are more memories to be gathered here. There is not much time, Inquisitor. Oh, okay. We should keep moving. I don't get to talk to you anymore. I don't want to talk with you anymore. Go! Okay. Well, that would be the divine. The demons! The demons! That would also be the divine. These are the dreamers, the Grey Warden. I joined the Wardens to serve in glory. No blade could touch me, nor any claw pierce my armor. Still, I was fated by joining to die. Alone in the deep roads, the calling in my mind, I sat by the last campfire I would see, allowing myself one night, one last night of terror and cursed the fate that brought me here. Let it be my choice to have served and died. Let it be nobility rather than the dread hand of fate. Destroy my destiny and let this be my decision. I need to find the thing to turn to that. Letter. Letter. All right, fine. Fine game. Keep running. Ow. My ears. Letter in a child's simple writing. The door is open. Mother said to run. She said the dark spawn were coming. She wanted me to go. The door is open. It was closed when I left. She said she would be right behind me. She said not to come back, no matter what. 
Lamps are lit all over the village even during the day to see through the smoke. Mother should be here by now. The door is open. I'm going to look inside. Uh, before I recover that memory... Ah. Hastily written note. Note left by a burning candle. Lunette, the breach is sealed and the war between the Templars and the Mages is finally over. All our fear and terror is finally ending as orders return to the world. I wish you could see the people celebrating at Haven. It is everything you would have wanted when you left for the Conclave. It will make your sacrifice a worthy one. What we do here with this fledging Inquisition will shape all of Thedas. It will make you proud. Your flame will burn forever as a beacon of hope. Something is happening. The ground is shaking and the soldiers are running to the gates. Rest well at the Maker's side, my daughter. I will sing your memory again soon. Love, Eloin. God. All these different perspectives that we're getting. It's so sad. I might have to recover this memory to get the, uh... Oh, hang on. It's over this way. Yeah, I might have to go... Th yeah, I gotta go through the barrier. Okay. Excuse me, guys. This is the breach back in Haven. That's how we... how I escaped. Yes, it is her. The demons! Keep running! Ah! Go! It was you. They thought it was Andraste sending me from the Fade, but it was the Divine behind me. And then you... She died. Yes. So this can't be the Divine. You don't say. Mm. I am sorry if I disappoint you. Damn, I actually thought it might have been, but... Her soul, her memory. Wow. The only thing that's important right now is getting out of the Fade. Whatever you are, you've helped us so far. What we do know is that the mortal divine perished at the temple thanks to the Grey Wardens. What, again? It wasn't their fault. We can debate the depressing details when we get back to Adamant. Assuming that the Wardens and their demon army didn't destroy the Inquisition while we were gone. So what are you saying? Terrible actions are only justified when they're your terrible actions? You tore Kirkwall apart and started the Mage Rebellion. To protect innocent mages, not madmen drunk on blood magic. But you'd ignore that, because you can't imagine a world without the Wardens, even if that's what we need. Agreed. The Wardens may once have served a greater good, but they are far too dangerous now. What are you saying? You want to get rid of the Wardens? Everyone makes mistakes. They would have died to save us. I don't know what to tell you. There are a few good ones, but an awful lot of the Wardens I've known went crazy. Oh, don't make me choose between my two sassy kings. If I was to choose, I'm a little bit inclined to be on Hawk's side only because uh, every single Grey Warden, except for Alistair, uh, seems to have uh, lost the plot. 
they're all kind of messed up or corrupted by Corypheus because they're all they're all they've all been compromised with the calling in their heads. I don't know if it means that the wardens need to cease, but I think that they need to kind of clean house a bit. Oh, should we make a choice or should we fence it? I don't know. It's kind of hard. I don't know what to say. Like, I don't think it's fair to be taking out this anger on Alistair, because, like, Alistair is obviously on our side here. But the Grey Wardens did kind of fuck things up, especially with the calling in their head. Which was just manipulation out of desperation. God, okay. This debate can wait until we're out of danger. Inquisitor. Danger. The Nightmare has found us. All together, I'm with you. Yeah, get along, team, please. Black Hole's like, not my wardens. Come, real or not, the Divine is the key to escaping from the Fade. Mm. Blackwall has the perspective and viewpoint on the Wardens that I kind of had in Dragon Age Origins, and I kept getting confused because I would forget the crucial element that a lot of the Wardens are also kind of like scumbags and criminals. And Blackwall is very much like, we're heroes, you know? We're the good people! And then you kind of forget. Um that they're not all good. Did the King's bastard think he could prove himself? It's far too late for that. Your whole life you left everything to more capable hands. The Archdemon, the throne of Ferelden. Who will you hide behind now? Is that all it's got? I've heard worse than that from Morrigan. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Where's your weapon, bro? Why are you fisty cuffing? What's going on here? Can I also just address the fact that Alistair and Hawk's shields are so painfully crap? Like, what, are, what is a Grey Warden doing with a small wooden round shield and not like, you know, a proud shield? And then Hawk, when his shield actually appears, it seems to have gone for a walk. It's just the basic shield. Like, they should have, uh, they should have better shields. All right, I've got the tarot cards. We'll return that. No, he doesn't. He's at full health. I love how concerned Maple Ass is about Solus. Solus, like, stubs his toe. Solus needs help! Like, my dear, he is at full health. He can take care of himself. Alright, um, let's go return this bad boy. Luvian. Who hasn't been a pe who hasn't been uh, feared yet? I think uh, everyone has now. The demon's spoken to everyone. Do you think you can fight me? I am your every fear come to life. I am the veiled hand of Corypheus himself. The demon army you fear, I command it. They are bound all through me. Ah, uh, so if we banish you, we banish the demons. Thank you, every fear come to life. <laughs> we we pissed off the demon so I actually thought it could have been the survivor uh, Justinia so we can't be right about everything she is like a weird manifestation of her um, very interesting but we did 
correctly call that she was like the the silhouette with us at the very beginning. That just made it. That just made sense, you know. Uh, we got a fork in the road. Let me go this way. So that uh, area where we saw that cutscene of us like like climbing up. That was the area that we glitched into at the beginning of the game after character created because it was that really, really steep staircase. So that's hilarious. Oh, there's a pride demon out here. Everybody ready for a fight? Oh, there's two! Oh my god. Holy shit. There's two! Oh, I didn't mean, uh, oh, that still, that still works. Cool. I accidentally casted that in the wrong place, but it still works. Ah, take my focus ability, punk. Fight together, die together. What was that? Who's, who's growling at me? Oh my god! <laughs> Stuffed animal! Oh, that was one of the thingies. Okay. You in bed. Oh, where's my stuffed animal? I need you to cuddle it to bed. Fears of the dreamers. The child. Haven is burned. Mama cries when I'm not looking. It's cold in the mountains. My feet hurt, but Mama says to hush that others have it worse. She says a monster named Corypheus came to Haven, and it was only the Maker's blessing that let us escape. I don't feel blessed. The monsters come every night when I sleep, and I don't want to make wake Mama crying again. I miss Sir Snort. Sir Snort always kept the monsters away in my dreams. I have placed Sir Snort with you, child. Hmm. This might go there. I might have to turn around. Hard to tell. Yeah, okay. I might be able to curl around here then. Keepers of fear. This was not a place of honor. Here came beasts from the north, carrying a poison called the Blight. It killed many warriors and sick in the land, and even their blood could kill. We feared them. It was right. We were strong, but still they came to feed upon our screams. These stones hold the screams of the Alamari. Wherever the spawn of darkness have come, these stones were raised, so the beasts might take their bounty of fear and depart. If they did not. Every man would put his screams into the stone until none were left inside him. Then he would light the fire to burn the screams away, and take up sword and shield to fight until death came. When all the men were dead, the women did the same, whether it was the tradition of the tribe or not. Then the children, even if all they held were fire pit sticks, remember our warning. Give the stone your screams, burn them so that they cannot master you and fight. Runes etched near the base of the screaming statue. Codex entries that you have to like search landmarks for as well that aren't really easily shown. Hard and to outrun anything in this swamp. 
shit like this. Note in the bottle. Waters of the Fade. It is unclear whether the water here is a manifestation of the Fade or physical water that has poured in through one of the rifts somehow. Possibly the rift in Crestwood. Huh. Yeah, that's really interesting thing about it, actually, because we got like the boats here and stuff as well. Boats that have like come in from Crestwood. The Scholar. When the Darkspawn were new, when the Magisters had just brought them to our world with their sin, I was amongst the first to call myself a Grey Warden and swear to end the blight that threatened our world. We had seen the Archdemon die from mortal blows, only to rise again from the body of one of its servants. It could not die. I searched in vain for some way to kill the beast and save my world. I slept in fear, with no solution, knowing only that the blight the Magisters had brought would destroy everything because I could not save it. Show me what must be done to slay the Archdemon. Show me what I need to save my world. Let's go look for that. It looks like it'll be over here. Solus needs help! Solus needs help! <sighs> sure. What about Varric? Varric almost died. Do you think Varric needs help, Maypaless? Varric's getting fucked up. That's so funny. <laughs> it's clear who you're prioritizing, Maple Lass. Not subtle. Whoa! Blackwall himself. Cassandra. Helplessness. Oh my god. Varric became his parents. Vivian. Irrelevance. Oh my god, I'm irrelevant. Okay. Iron Bull Madness. Barak became his parents. Wow. Blackwall himself. Dorian. Temptation. Sandra Helplessness. Sarah. The Nothing. Solus. Dying alone. Oh, You don't have to die alone, baby. I'm here. Cole. Oh despair so that is that is like Cole's fear is despair keep it keep Cole away from despair demons um have we got everyone what's mine I don't have one I got a violet darkspawn blood though wow this is really cool There are some that are not marked. Not all of them are, are marked. I don't know if that means that there's potentially companions that you could recruit before this mission if we do things in a different order or something, or whether there's just unmarked graves, but that was really neat. There was no Hawk or Alistair ones in there. I guess they're not our companions. Nice. Okay. Oh, retrieve the dreamer's reward. Cool. Let's go. That's a really neat touch, all those graves. Look! Yep, those are spiders, all right. Or are they? Area strength, okay. Oh my god, look at him just walking down the stairs. It's like I have arrived. Black wall. Be a tank. Be a tank, will ya? Nice. 
I can't take those. Hang on. Um, I have to wait till battle's over. Throw something away real quick. the rift to escape the fade. Getting out of here. Defeat demons to leave. And we get a reward along the way. You must get through the rift, Inquisitor. Get through and then slam it closed with all your strength. That will banish the army of demons and exile this cursed creature to the farthest reaches of the Fade. An essence of perfection and a legion mace schematic for tier 3. Cool. Essence of perfection. E? Alright, here we go. Grab this before we go then. The rift! We're almost there! Oh. Why not just dare the old gods to try and stop you? <laughs> I knew what I was seeing. I knew what I was seeing. And it's just it's just the one. It looks like. Look at this. Oh my god. So like. Oh, but they look different for different people apparently, but it's all spiders to me. It makes sense. I gotta I gotta fear spiders. This game is tuned into me, clearly. Oh my god, nightmares Leon, look at this shit. Look at the eyes! Oh Please tell Liliana. I am sorry. I failed you too. Oh wow. Whoa! No, I wanted to fight it! Oh, I get to fight this looking thing. Aspect of the Nightmare. Dude, what is this, like, alien predator looking ass? Look at this. Oh my god. This is- that's so cool! You will die in agony! Ah, my ears! The only thing you're gonna hurt is my ears! In war victory! Dude, this is insane. That is such a cool design. Aspect of the nightmare. You okay, Alistair? You look a bit dizzy. Solus just got like wiped off the map. Hold on. Shut up. You are nothing. What is going on with Alistair? Oh, and Hawk. What the fuck?
You cannot stand against me. I can't see where Hawk is. Someone help! Oh, hang on, he's over there. I grow fat on your fear. There's still a goddamn spider. I thought we blew it up. Oh my god, the eyes. Ugh. How do we get by? Go! I'll cover you. No, you were right. The wardens caused this mess. A warden must. A warden must help them rebuild. That's your job. Corypheus is mine. Video game. No. No. If you love someone, you have to let them go. Oh, Hawk. Oh. I hate my life. I hate my life. <laughs> why? Why can't we just all fight it together and then run? Why can't, why can't we all just run, actually? I've got barrier. I've got magic. I'll just... Where's the secret hidden third option? Oh, should I flip a coin? I have to choose between my two boys. I'm not, I'm not pleased. <sighs> Look. No, but I think uh, Alistair staying, Alistair staying, or like Alistair get escaping for a chance to rebuild the wardens, uh, makes so much more sense. Hawk and Isabella are not going to be able to reunite on the on the seas, are they? Man, okay. I have to destroy this part of myself in order to move on. I'm so sorry, Hawk. I love you so much. Goodbye. Destiny awaits us both, dear boy. We have much to do. Before I go, a word of advice. We stand upon the precipice of change. The world fears the inevitable plummet into the abyss. 
Watch for that moment. And when it comes, do not hesitate to leap. It is only when you fall that you learn whether you can fly. Hawk. Say goodbye to Varric for me. <laughs> Spiders. Always the maker damn Just, just make it and leave, man. Just run. <sighs> no. Uh, I can't. I had to. Oh. Uh, why uh, did the game make me kill myself? Oh, I'm so upset. I can't believe I had to kill Hawk. Keep the rift open. He's probably he's probably just behind us. All right, never mind. No demon army for Corypheus, it appears. The divine, or her spirit, was right. You know that's not how they see it, though. And they just saw their Inquisitor work another miracle. Hawk is alive. He's fighting that spider, and he's killing that spider. Hawk's a badass. <sighs> Hawk is not dead. He's just chilling in the fade. I love that he his final words was about Varric and not like uh like a love interest Isabella or any or like even Bethany you no know, mentions about like family. I don't even know where, where Bethany is, what she's doing, but oh my god. He's alive. He killed that spider. And he's gonna make a throne out of the spider's corpse and wait for us to go and get him. They came out of this alive. As far as I'm concerned, they can tell whatever stories they like. I suppose the Inquisitor and his warden friend escaped by the skin of their teeth wouldn't be as good for morale. Inquisitor, the Archdemon flew off as soon as you disappeared. The Venatori Magister is unconscious but alive. Cullen thought you might wish to deal with him yourself. As for the Wardens, those who weren't corrupted helped us fight the demons. We stand ready to help make up for Clarell's tragic mistake. Where's Hawk? Where's Hawk? Oh, why'd you have to ask twice, man? I had to kill myself. <sighs> Hawk sacrificed his life to save us and strike a decisive blow against Corypheus. Well. Oh. No, not the greatly disapproves. Oh. He gave his life not because he'd sworn an oath or been marked as special, but because someone had to do it. Alistair, you're the senior surviving Grey Warden. What do we do now? Warden Commander Alistair. Oh, the Wardens are banished from Orlay. They do not help the Inquisition. Obviously, oh. The Grey Wardens help the Inquisition. They may be vulnerable to corruption. I have a feeling that they would probably have learned their lessons from this event, though. And they'd be like, that calling in my head's not real. The Wardens are banished from Orlay and do not help the Inquisition. Or help the Inquisition. God damn. So not only do we have to make a choice between uh, Hawk or Alistair making it out of the Fade. I then have to make another choice about accepting the Grey Warden's help or not. I feel like we need their help. They, they're making me make, um, they make, they're, they're making me make too many, too many heavy decisions. Um, I think we need, I think the, I think we need the wardens. Right? I think we need I think we need the wardens. 
<sighs> God. You stay and do whatever you can to help. Alistair believes that the Wardens are worth saving. And I trust him. You're still vulnerable to Corypheus and possibly his Venatori. But there are plenty of demons that need killing. <sighs> While they do that, I'll report to the Wardens at Weishaupt. Corypheus won't catch us with our trousers down again. Thank you, Your Worship. We will not fail you. You've already created something big with this Inquisition. I wish you luck leading it. I'm fucking depressed. Greatly disapprove from Varric and Solus. Just let down my best friend and my boyfriend. God damn it. And Hawk died. Alistair sent me one final report. He's on his way to Weishaupt. As for the Grey Wardens, they are fighting demons and Red Templars while staying clear of Venatori. Hugh dealt Corypheus a significant blow, Inquisitor. We owe much of that to Hawk and to the Divine. Yes. You took an army from Corypheus, but that will matter little if Orle falls into chaos. All arrangements have been made for the ball in Halam Shiral. Let us know when you are ready to proceed. Remind me what we know about the plot against Selene. The Venatori are planning some kind of attack on the Imperial Court. Corypheus may even be fueling the conflict between the Empress and her cousin, Grand Duke Gaspard. If we warn Selene, she may prove a most valuable ally against Corypheus. I'll go as soon as I am able. Good. Cullen, Josephine and I will discuss the best way to gain an audience with the Empress. Speak with us when you are ready. What was she like? Divine Justinia. Or her soul. Or the spirit that took her form. I read your report. I know it isn't clear, but... She seemed calm, serene even, and she guided us the whole way through. That does sound like her. She did ask me to tell you something, though. She said, I'm sorry, I failed you too. Oh. I should finish this before it slips my mind. Perhaps later we might discuss the matter further. Thank you. Pressing. Um, all right. Out. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, after the champion of Kirkwall's sacrifice in the Fade, giving him and the Inquisitor a chance to escape, Alistair left to report to the Grey Warden leadership at the Fortress of Weishaupt. Yanderfells. I see a uh, Warden Commander Alistair in our future. That was a really, really hard decision to make. Um, it does make sense for the Wardens to remain and not to banish them from Orlais. Uh, there was a lot of greatly approvals and a lot of greatly disapprovals uh, in that group, which was pretty rough. We have gotten a lot of Solus approval and a lot of Varric approval already. So hopefully that doesn't change things too much. Um, there's no way to tell. I literally cannot even look at a way to tell where their meters are, which is really a shame. Um, and I guess something else that's like kind of annoying about that is, for example, in, in Dragon Age 2, there's a specific 
there's a specific thing you can do with Meryl that flips their approval meter, like literally backwards. Like it'll go all the fucking way to the other side. <laughs> and I'm hoping that this game doesn't do anything like that. Um, wow, no update for Hawks, just an update for Alistair. My God. Okay, we got an update for uh, Terra. Not an update, but a new one. So let's read it while we all just sit here depressed. We heard their screams from miles away out in the darkness where we couldn't see anything. Once, back when I worked on my uncle's farm hold in the Banorn, there was a calf that fell into a gulch and broke its leg. I should have run for help, but I thought I could drag it back to safety on my own. I wasn't strong enough, however, and each time I tried to pull it, its leg, that calf screaming haunts me to this day. And that's what I heard out there. Like that calf was coming for me, come to rip off my leg ever so slowly so I knew what it felt like. But we all heard something different, you see. One of the others said he'd run into a dark spawn at Ostagar, and the scream he'd heard was from something called a shriek. Another said it was a dragon roar, just like the beast that burned his family. That's when I knew what was out there was a demon. Something that wasn't just looking to make us afraid. It wanted us gibbering in terror. It wanted us running for our lives. And we did. I couldn't rightly tell you what it even looked like. There was something in the shadows, and even though we were ready when it let out that howl, I turned and ran. I couldn't even control myself. When bowels turned to water, I dropped my sword and I took off. It was only later when I realized I was separated from the others and that there were more of those demons out there, hungry for more of my panicked tears. Report given by Haren, soldier of the Ferelden army. History. Here lies the abyss, a well of all souls. From these emerald waters doth life begin anew. Come to me, child, and I shall embrace you. In my arms lies eternity. Chantry sisters have long debated this section of the Chant of Light. It is tempting to assume that the Well of All Souls is a literal well, but such imagery appears nowhere in Andraste's other works. An examination of Threadenese uh, 1-4 yields clues. From the waters of the Fade you, must, you made the world. As the Fade had been fluid, so was the world fixed. It is possible, even likely, that the emerald waters Andraste refers to are the substance of the Fade, which began as an ocean of dreams, and was reduced to a well, bottomless but limited in scope by the Maker's creation of our world. Is Andraste urging the listener to come to the Fade? Should we take from these emerald waters doth life begin anew as literal evidence of reincarnation, or even of life after death, as the cult of spirits suggests? Or is the a figurative benediction indicating that the Maker is the source of all life, and in finding his embrace for eternity, will we, we will only be returning our souls from whence they came? An excerpt from Reflections on Divinity by Revered Mother Juliet. And places on Skyhold. Possible reference to Skyhold in the readings of the Great Library of Val Royo. What follows are the names of the powers that may have held a fortress in the region. Unfortunately, time and records are such that for many, the name is all that is known, and some of those are merely a reference in other works. Your fortress is a vagabond, but years would do that to stone well made. The Tan Empire, passing mention of an unseen trading partner occupying Warehold the Sky in the Ravani Ballad of Kintam of Knoll, thought fictional, date uncertain. Father of Rast, and that Ferelden built upon the sky, mentioned as a possible destination of the spirit of the dead Ban, a Ferelden lullaby dated to the Exalted Age. Lady Bander of She, Ferelden highwayman banished in the 83rd year of the Black Age, thought to use a place in the clouds as refuge. Spire, or Legion Tavern Song, mentioning Skyhold, by name of as a fanciful utopia, but also claiming nugs with wings and a dragon that blows bubbles. Tiorn the Sixth, or Tiorn Vi, possible etching of major Skyhold features, but no context available. Unknown language, the tile has never been translated. Pre-glory. Tevinter carving, a broken relief that matches the outline of the main gate, but all possible scholarship suggests a structure outside Minrathus pre-divine. Possible shared inspiration, but it is not known in what direction. Study continues. We will apprise you of any other references of worth. Interesting. Okay, and um, that brings us to the end of this episode. Um, a very dreary and depressing ending to the episode where we said farewell to Hawk and we know what happens with the Grey Wardens now. We've got 
um, Alistair remaining alive to to rebuild, uh, to steer the wardens hopefully in a, in a positive and good direction, and warden, uh, sorry, and um, Hawk has uh, tried to, I guess, make up for his mistake that seems to be weighing on him with Corypheus, that he feels that it's his duty to do that. And Varric and Solus have uh, greatly uh, disapproved of us. And as a result, I'm going to throw myself off of that barrier. And I actually want to see if um, this changes anything with uh, interacting with our characters, actually. I cannot believe the Grey Wardens could even conceive of such a plan. To seek out these old gods deliberately in some bizarre attempt to preempt the Blight. I know. I'm glad we could end this madness before it started. Thank you. I've been on my own for so long. It's difficult to get used to having the support of others. Those fools and duty. Responsibility is not expertise. Action is not inherently superior to inaction. Forgive me. The entire idea is unnerving. It definitely is. Uh, take that flirt option for a slight approval at this point. Oh. Oh, hang on. He's adding. You, you're adding. Oh, you're telling, you're telling my story. Telling my story or just our story? That's the conclave explosion, and that's the breach. This is the Inquisition forming. I'm not sure of the wolf significance. And then... Oh, this is the choice between the mages and the templars. And then that's the... Assault at Haven, and then this is what's just... Wow, okay, cool. He's he's painting our story. You are so romantic. How can I help? Because this is the Warden symbol, because he's seeing how everything's gone. I need to know more about Corypheus. You've taken his army. He lacks the conventional forces to take Orle. He must see Orle destroyed utterly by whatever means possible, not merely thrown into chaos. Okay, I think he's not mad at me, which is good. I'd like to hear more about what you saw in your exploration of the Fade. I think I have shared everything of note. I should spend some time encountering more stories. I doubt that. I feel like you have more stories. We'll talk later. Goodbye. That's fine. I'm gonna go talk with Varric now. I'm gonna check in with him about Hawk. I'm gonna cry again at this point. Did I ever tell you about the time Hawk was on a merchant guild hit list? Tough. Hawk's uncle got into an investment scheme with a couple of merchant cast businessmen. They took a lot of people's coin in order to arrange the import of wandering hills from the Anderfells. A, a delicacy, I'm told. Their weird foreign foodstuffs arrived alive and one of them, true to its name, wandered off in the middle of the night. Man, like, <laughs> the fact that we have Varric in our party makes this so much more depressing of Hawk dying because no one except Leliana is connected to Alistair. So maybe Leliana would be like a little bit sad as they spent time together, but like <laughs> nobody else is connected to Alistair. So this, I'm literally just stabbing myself in the gut constantly by even engaging with this. The guild uh, traced the shipments to Hawk's uncle, but as usual, he was so far in debt he couldn't see daylight. So they went after Hawk instead. They sent guys from the local Carter to Hawk's estate one night. Five big dusters, armed to the teeth. 
They kick in the door, and Hawk yells, You're just in time, and drags them over to a game of wicked grace. They play two hands of cards before the city guard showed up to take them away. A couple of them became regulars in our weekly game. Hawk just had that effect on people. I, I always wanted to tell that one. Thanks. I guess I've got some letters to write. Isabella should know. Excuse me. Oh, that, that one, that stings so badly. It's a, it, you know what? I will say it's just a, a, an absolute gift that we've like been able to even have him in this game. Like, honestly, I didn't, I didn't think he would, he would show up at all. Um, and it wasn't until the Corypheus reveal and thinking about that stuff. And then we had like that light bulb moment that like, holy fuck, we've encountered this guy before. So it's, it's honestly a, just a blessing that he was even uh, included and was here and was my character like that. That was great. Um, at the very least, we got to give our own character from a game uh, like an actual uh, send off, which is so weird um, and kind of amazing. Like what kind of game allows you to do something like that? You know what I mean? Like what game where you play as a different character goes, hey, interact, do a quest, go adventuring with your previously created character. Um, and then you can actually decide like their fate or what happens with them. Like, I just think that's so special to be able to engage with past characters that you used to play as and actually um, affect your own story like that. Like, it's so much better than, oh yeah, Isabella and Hawk went off at sea and were never seen again, or they die off screen, or, you know, some something like that, you know what I mean? Like, we actually got to decide our own character's ending, and I think that's really beautiful and special. And this is me going through the five stages of grief, because I'm really trying not to be miserable about uh, the fact that I've just murdered my character from Dragon Age 2. Sorry, I really need to write some letters. Another time, all right? He's gonna write letters to people. Mother Giselle said the maker. <sighs> um, also, I think that um, the the that Venatory asshole is still alive. So I'm assuming there would be a a chair of judgment. I'm gonna make a new save. Let's do this. I knew I said it was the end of the episode, but I have to see this through to the end. Because I think that this is this guy. Adamant's influence continues, your worship. I submit Lord Livius Erimond of Virantium, who remains loyal to Corypheus. We found him alive, offering extreme resistance, likely because the Order will ask for his head. In more colorful terms. To say nothing of justice you might personally require for what was suffered in the Fade. He is a dark magician. <laughs> I love wearing this shirt when I play Dragon Age. It's so funny. Uh. Countless better men and women than you are dead. Why shouldn't this be quick? I recognize none of this proceeding. You have no authority to judge me. On the contrary, many officials have communicated that they will defer to the Inquisitor on this matter. Because they fear, not just Corypheus, but Taventa, rightful ruler of every piece of ground you trod in your pathetic life. I serve the living God. Bring down your blades and free me from the physical. Glory awaits me. I love that we have the, um, I love that we have the ability to sit in our fancy little chair and like, do something like this. Oh, this is interesting. Give him to the wardens. Seems kind of interesting. Uh, I think that we should. Do I get to cut his head off myself? I'm really tempted to do this, but I also, I think that this is worse. 
I think that this is worse. You are the worst of us. The damage you have done is beyond all reckoning. A mage's crime, a mage's punishment. Lord Livius Eremond of Verantium, I deny you death. Tranquility. You... You cannot! I am a lord, you pissads! I will not lose myself! I find it really interesting that Vivian's the only mage that approves of that action. Actually, no, I take that back. Vivian is a first enchanter. Of course that she would she would be fine with that because that's what happens with circles. That makes perfect sense for her. Um, the disapproval from the other mages and also Dorian, uh, not Dorian, sorry, Cole makes a lot of sense because Cole wouldn't want that. That is a little, that is a little bit of... <laughs> A shame when I'm hitting these disapprovals, but like that dude is a scumbag. Um, oh god, I put these up as a joke. Who put these can <laughs> who put these canary statues in here, guys? Certainly not me. Get get them out of here. People will start to get ideas. Um, okay. There you go. I'm gonna bring this episode to a close now. I have sat in judgment of that butthole, and he is tranquil. Otherwise, he was just going to die. Like, I was just going to cut his head off, but, um, yes. Tranquility. Um, and now I bring this episode to a close. Thank you so much for joining me for this one. I didn't realize that the abyss in question was the deep, dark pit of depression that I'm about to now fall into uh, as a result of um, that quest outcome. I can't wait for next time. It's. I think that... The next main quest we do will be a little bit more on the positive side. Maybe we're going to a ballroom. So maybe that'll be a little bit more positive than going into a demonic nightmare scenario. Oh, I'm going to go take a break. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do hope you've enjoyed this episode. I'm sure that the choices I've made will be uh, controversial as always. That is classic Bioware. I'm sure that I've got some Hawk lovers and some, uh, some Alistair lovers and vice versa that will hate what I've done. But alas, choice-based RPG, baby. Our, all of our stories are unique. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.